This LOS is explain skewness and the meaning of a positively or negatively skewed return distribution. Okay, before we talk about skewness, let's talk about symmetry in a return distribution. So if return distribution is symmetrical about the mean, a normal distribution, then each side of the distribution is a mirror image of the other, okay? So one of the most important distributions is the normal distribution, and it's, uh, it's where we've got symmetry. In a normal distribution, the mean equals the median equals the mode, and that's equal to zero, okay? Here in the middle, and that's really important. I put that in bold. It is completely described by two parameters, its mean and its variance. So these are properties of a normal distribution. Roughly 68% of its observations lie between plus and minus one standard deviation. So we saw that we have um, the mean is zero, then we have plus or minus one standard deviation. 68% of the observations are gonna lie there. And 95 are gonna lie between, 95% uh, of the observations are gonna lie between plus or minus two standard deviations. And then finally, 99% are gonna fall within plus or minus the three standard deviations. Okay, I just put in a little bit of information in this slide. It's uh, some of my own thoughts. Uh, it's with regards to the implications for portfolio management. Remember, volatility exists when we're investing in stocks. We've seen that before. Uh, annual returns are negative roughly one third of the time. We saw that from the histograms. And, uh, but there are more years with positive returns than negative. And so from the Ibbotson histogram, the 24 calendar years were negative and uh, 59 years were positive, okay? That was the 83 years. Remember, to, uh, that, was, that data was 2008 to 1926. So you do 2008 minus 1926 plus one, we had 83 years. So 59 were positive, 24 were negative. And this makes sense. Like long-term on average, economies have been growing and wealth has been created. So long-term on average, We've had more positive years, but um, there are the negative years. There's trends and cycles in the market, okay? So uh, I made a note here. Note, you don't need to calculate skewness, but in the CFA level one text, there's lots on how to calculate. So this shows it's very important of understanding what the LOS is and what it's asking for. Of course, the text is comprehensive. It's a textbook. It's gonna have more content than what is tested. That's why review notes are so popular. However, um, it's my opinion that you have to have a good understanding of the LOS and you have to use the text um, 100% and in, it's, it's better in my opinion and can be just as fast, but you have to be able to put the text through a filter, through a lens saying, okay, that's really important, I need it. No, that I can kind of skim through. There's a lot of, question, a lot of calculations on skewness. Nice to know, don't really need to know to pass the test. Skewness. A distribution that is not symmetrical is called skewed. A return distribution with positive skew has frequent small losses and a few extreme gains. A return distribution with a negative skew has frequent small gains and a few extreme losses. A positively skewed distribution has a long tail on its right hand side. For the positively skewed unimodal distribution, the mode is less than the median, which is less than the mean. So I've written here mean, median, and mode. And the way that some people like to uh, memorize that is that's in alphabetical order, quite frankly. M-E-A, M-E-D, M-O. So it's alphabetical order. And if it's positively skewed, wrong, uh, long tail on its right-hand side, you can see the arrows are pointing to the right, okay? So you have to remember that's positive. When we go to the negative skewed unimodal distribution, okay, which has a long tail on the, on the uh, left-hand side, uh, the mean is less than the median, which is less than the mode. So again, we have them in the same alphabetical order, mean, median, mode, but the arrows are pointing to the left, and that's a negatively skewed. So that's the way to memorize that because they're going to give you some practice, uh, some, some questions where they'll, they'll jumble up uh, and you just have to write it out and, and match up the, uh, the phrasing. 
So it says here, this is from the text, investors should, should be attracted by a positive skew, okay? Because the mean return falls above the median. Relative to the mean return, a positive skew amounts to a limited, though frequent downside compared with somewhat unlimited, but less frequent upside. So that's a little bit confusing because um, when we look at the actual returns, um, we're going to see that there's um, some negative skew. Okay, here's that uh, histogram that we've been looking at using the Ibbotson data from 1926 to uh, 2008. And um, it's, uh, dis it's, it's, it's uh, skewed to the left. It's negatively skewed, okay? And um, uh, so up here on the top, we've got the positive skewed, remember? That's the mean is greater than the median is greater than the mode. That's the positive skewed. And here we have the uh, negative skewed. The mean is less than the median is less than the mode. So again, uh, just put it alphabetically, positive to the right, negative to the left. You'll be able to answer any question in words. Here we've got the histogram, and that's important because I'm just going to show you some text to that on the next slide. Okay, this is the last slide for this LOS. And um, as I said, we just showed the, the histogram. And it says the previous histogram demonstrates the negative skewness of stock returns by plotting a, a histogram of US large company of stock returns for 1926 to 2008. So we saw that, that's using the Ibbotson data. Stock returns are usually negatively skewed because there is a higher frequency of negative deviations from the mean which also has the effect of overestimating standard deviation. So I gave the page number and reference that was from uh, 2016 CFA level one, for example. Investors should be attracted by a positive skew because the mean return falls above the median. Relative to the mean return, positive skew amounts to a limited, though frequent downside compared with a somewhat unlimited, but less frequent upside. So I just put those two paragraphs on the one page because if I was writing some uh, multiple choice ex uh, exam questions as, a, as the exam writer, it's these kind of word games with regards to the positive, you know, investors should be attracted by a positive skew, most likely or least likely. But the histogram demonstrates the negative skewness of stock returns and that's, what's, that's the actual, okay? So just something to be uh, careful there with regards to the wording. So that's the last slide for this LOS. Thank you.